whatever the next deck talk series is, I don't know, but uh, this first one is for couples, so I will not be there, but y'all go ahead and have a good time. Grab your Bibles and go with me to the book of Genesis. Go with me to the book of Genesis, the 13th chapter. Go with me to Genesis, the 13th chapter. We're going to have an amazing Sunday this morning. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. So we're going to begin reading at the fifth verse of Genesis 13. We're going to read down to verse 11, and we're going to pick right back up at verse 14. So Genesis chapter number 13, we're going to begin reading at verse number 5 down to number 11, and we're going to pick back up at verse 14 and read down to 17. I will be reading in the New International Version, and um, you all can follow along with me on the screen or in whatever text you have in front of you. If you don't mind, may we all stand just as a sign of unity. I see we're standing to honor the word of the Lord. Genesis chapter number 13, verse number 5. Now Lot was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. But the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. And quarreling arose between Abram's herders and Lot's. The Canaanites and Perizzites were also living in the land at that time. So Abram said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your herders and mine. For we are close friends, for we are close relatives. Is not the whole land before you? Let's part company. If you go to the left... I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan towards Or was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company. Verse number 14. The Lord said to Abram after Lot had parted from him, look around from where you are to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth So that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. I'm going to go back up to verse number five. Now Lot, who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. But the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. And quarreling arose between Abram's herders and Lot's. I want you to minister the title for our time together to your neighbor, and I want you to say, neighbor, I have a lot on my mind. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this day. Holy Spirit, you speak now. Your children are listening. We thank you for the anointing that makes preaching easy. Lord, rest in your people's hearts this morning, wherever they are seated in this sacred space or even watching us online. Be with them now. May they hear what you have to say to them. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I have a lot on my mind. I have a lot on my mind.
1802, Thomas Jefferson established what's known as the United States Military Academy at West Point, which I attended. And with any place that's as old as that one, as I'm sure you can imagine, there are many traditions that were observed. Every year before students at the academy would head back home for the holidays, we would get dressed up in our fancy dress gray uniforms for our annual Christmas dinner. It's usually a fun time where we enjoy the best food that's served all year. Now, we wouldn't usually have it, have it but for the Christmas dinner, we could enjoy steak, sometimes lobster. We would have eggnog and have an amazing time. And the dinner would conclude with the singing of the 12 days of Christmas. Now, after we would stuff our faces with as much food as we could bear, dinner and dessert, and yelling at the top of our lungs the full 12 days of Christmas, the 12 days of Christmas would be the end of the dinner, but the beginning of a non-mandatory tradition that took place. We would flood out of the mess hall onto a landing that we called the apron, a great big open area where the entire Corps of Cadets, all of the students, would enjoy smoking cigars. It's a non-mandatory tradition that, um, that most students participated in. And um, as I'm sure you can imagine, there was a great deal of haze on that night. There's so much smoke on that night that we could be seen smoking the cigars. The smoke would emanate from the apron and you could see it from across the river. There's so much smoke. About 4,000 people all at the same time smoking cigars. Now, while many of them had an amazing time and it was such a festive evening, it left the entire student body with a problem. Everything smell like smoke. Now, it was a fun time, but it left us with a lasting problem. Because every stitch of wool on that fancy dress gray uniform had been infected with the smell of cigar smoke. The smell was so bad that Students would be seen hanging that uniform in the ceiling of the hallways in order to air it out as best they could. The smoking was done for days, but you could still smell the smoke. And this recalls a reality that we all must reconcile in our lives, and that is the reality of residue. The reality of residue. The cigars were done being smoked, but you could still smell the residue of the smoke. Residue, the amount of something that remains after the main part has gone. The amount of something that remains after the main part is gone has been taken or has been used. It's the amount of something that is still there after the event is over. It's the amount of something that remains after the season is over. It's the amount of something that remains after the conversation is over. It's the amount of something that remains after the discomfort is over. It's the amount of something that remains after the joy is over. It's the amount of something that remains. It's residue. And you may not know what it's like to have to get the residue of smoke out of a uniform. Maybe you know what it's like to try to get the residue of a stain out of material. And no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you scrub, no matter how hard the chemical is that you use, you just can't get the stain out. There are some stains that are so deep that they leave residue. And I want to take a moment and pause for the cause of asking just a few of you. Everybody may not get this question, but aren't you glad Jesus paid it all? 
<laughs> Aren't you glad Jesus paid it all? Yeah, because the psalmist said, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, and he washed it white as snow. In other words, there are some stains that are so deep that you can't get them out. But it doesn't matter what kind of stain you've accumulated on your life. You have a Jesus who can get the stain out. He washed it white as snow. I wonder if there's anybody who can just praise God for the stains that we can't see. Can you praise God for the stains we can't see? As a matter of fact, some of y'all should look at your neighbor and just begin to testify. I know I don't look like it. I know I look like I got it all together, but I didn't almost lose my mind. There was a period of my life where I actually lost my mind. But Jesus came in and washed me white as snow. I know I look like I got it all together, and I know you sing the song, it could have been me outdoors. It could have been me with no food. It could have been me with no clothes. But you sing the song, it could have been me. Well, it was me outdoors. It was me with no food. It was me with no clothes. But when I met Jesus, he washed me white as snow. He washed me white as snow. He got all the residue out of me. He got me to a place where now I can walk freely from my past. There is no more sin. There is no more shame. There is no more condemnation because Jesus, he washed me white as snow. Jesus gets the residue out. Jesus gets rid of residue. 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 And I want to encourage anybody who walked in this place with residue on your life. There's a Jesus who can get rid of all the residue that's left on you. I know other people looking at you funny because of what you got on you. But you got a Jesus that looks at it and ain't scared of it. He said, just bring it to me. I'll wash it white as snow. I'll wash it white as snow. I'll wash it white as snow. In other words, I'll make it so that it don't even look like you've been through what you've been through. You looking at me today like I got it all together, but I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood, and I don't look wet and don't smell like smoke. Because Jesus got rid of the residue. Jesus gets rid of 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 residue. As a matter of fact, somebody on your row right now would get up and move to a different seat if they knew half of your story. But when you walked in here, you didn't look like what you've been through because Jesus got rid of the residue. I wish more of us would just be honest and testify and say, I know what you've been through. I know what I've been through. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You can't tell it, let me tell it. You can't tell it, let me tell it. You can't tell it, let me tell it. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. I know. You don't know like I know. You don't know like I know. He picked me up and he turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. I was out there looking crazy. I lost my mind. But Jesus is a mind regulator. And I look like it's all together. I look like I'm sane in the membrane. Because Jesus got rid of the residue. Jesus 
gets rid of residue. Jesus gets rid of residue. And while Jesus gets rid of residue, I want to pause and let you know that we, you and I, still have a problem. Because while Jesus gets rid of residue, he can only get rid of what you're willing to release. He'll only get rid of what you're willing to release. And here's the problem that we have. Because sometimes God calls us to put an end to things and we're not willing to put an end to them. So we take the residue with us. The truth is that God cannot clean what you refuse to crucify. He can't clean what you refuse to crucify. I want it, but you gotta give it to me. I wanna take it from you, but you gotta release it. I'm a gentleman, I ain't gonna just come in your life and take it from you. You gotta be willing to give it to me. You gotta be willing to release it to me. And when you release it to me, I promise I'll make it so that it's gone for good. But the first step is you gotta be willing to give it to me. God cannot clean what we refuse to crucify. Sit down. We, we almost done. Get up. Let's, I got to. Y'all getting me excited. You're getting me excited. <laughs> Here's the deal. God cannot clean what you refuse to crucify. And the truth is your calling requires crucifixion. When God calls you, he often calls you to say goodbye to some things from your past. And listen, some things God calls you to say goodbye to, not because they're bad or immoral. Some things God calls you to say goodbye to because they're not meaningful and they don't serve your purpose. They don't serve where I'm trying to take you. It's not bad. It's not immoral. But I need you to say goodbye to it. I need you to let go of it so you can pick something else back up. But as long as you're carrying that in your hands, you don't have space for what I'm calling you to pick up. Some things you say goodbye to not because they're bad or immoral. Some things you say goodbye to because they don't serve your purpose. And the truth is, everything that you say goodbye to is not about your flesh. Most things that you say goodbye to are about your future. And I wonder if there's anybody in this room who says, I'm so committed to my future, I'll say goodbye to whatever I got to say goodbye to. I'll say so long bye-bye to whatever I got to say goodbye to. If it's a thing, so long bye-bye. If it's a person, so long bye-bye. It don't serve where God's trying to take me, so I got to move forward into my future. Some things are not bad or immoral but God calls you to say goodbye to those things and sometimes those people because of where God's trying to take you. Is this not what happens for Abram in the 12th chapter of Genesis? In the very first uh, verse of the 12th chapter of Genesis, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. All the people on earth will be blessed through you. Now, we shout about the promise, but do we shout about the instruction he gave before the promise? I want to give it to you, but you got to leave them. I, I, want, I want you... I want to give you a land that I'll show you, but you got to leave the land that you're in. I want to give you a people you assigned to, but you got to leave the people that you're with now. I, I know we shout over the promise, but do we shout over the instructions? Verse number four says, so Abram went as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. So Abram went as the Lord told him. And Lot went with him. 
So Abram went as the Lord told him. And Lot went with him. Abram went as the Lord told him. And Lot went with him. Verse number one. Go from your country, your people, and your father's household. Go, go from your country, your people, and your father's household. Go from your country, geographical location, your people, community, and your father's household, blood. I want you to leave all of that to the land I'll show you. So Abram went. As the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Go from your country and your people. But people went with him. See, see, this, see, we, we, it's, it's funny when we're looking at Abram doing it. But the truth is, most of us do it. See, because Abram made the errant assumption that many of us make, which is that mostly obedient is good enough. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See, here's, here's, the, here's the assumption that Abram said. It said, go from your father's household. Now, who's in his father's household? It's his father, himself, his wife, and Lot. He has to take his wife. He should have left his father and Lot. But see, this is what happens. When some people see what's on you and they see where you about to go, they say, can I come too? And the problem is God didn't tell them to come. Abram went as the Lord told him. And Lot said, I see you on the way somewhere. I see God's got something special on your life. I see you anointed. Can I tag along for the ride? And most of our problem is we don't see them as a heavy enough burden to say no to. We see them as something small to just take along with us. So we end up taking residue. This ain't a relationship. This is residue. We hold on to what God is telling us to let go of. And the problem is we don't see it as residue. Many of us are burdened in our minds. And the problem that we carry is that whenever there's something in a previous season that no longer serves your purpose, if it doesn't serve your purpose, it will not give you peace. We're in a serious series called Rest in Peace. And the problem that many of us have is that we don't have peace in our lives, not because we don't have all of the money that we want, not because things ain't just working well at the house. We don't have peace because somewhere in the recesses of our mind, we know know that we got stuff attached to us that ain't serving us. As a matter of fact, not only is it not serving me, it's siphoning away from me. It's taking stuff that I need in this season in order to go into my purpose. Not only is it taking resources, it's taking the most prominent resource I have. It's taking my focus. I got a lot on my mind. I got a residue on my mind. I can't think clearly about what's next for me because I'm so stuck on thinking about you and everything else that you got going on. I got a lot on my mind Lot Lot what is Lot everybody has one and Lot is residue of a past season that disrupts the present and delays the future Lot Residue of a past season that disrupts the present and delays the future. Disrupts the present and delays the future. Disrupts the present and delays the future. It disrupts the present and delays the future. It's disrupting your peace presently and it's keeping you from the promise in the future. It's disrupting your rest presently and it's keeping you from resources in the future. It's disrupting your present and delaying your future. It's a lot. 
And the problem is you don't think your lot is a lot. Yeah, not only do you not see your lot as residue, you don't see your lot as a lot. You don't see it as a big deal. You don't see it as something so big. But here's the problem. I want to take your attention now from Genesis 12 to Genesis 13. Because later we discover that what has happened now is as increase comes to Abram. As increase comes to Abram. As Abram grows, everything around him grows. And the problem is your residue grows with you. It's not inactive. It moves when you move. It grows when you grow. So what only took a little bit of time, now the time it does take is too precious. And you can't give it to that thing anymore. You can't give it to that person anymore because the thing that was so small has now grown. Genesis 13, we see this happening to Abram. You see what happens is in verse number five, it says Lot who was moving about with Abram also had flocks and herds and tents. Now at first, it just said Abram went with them and Abram took all that he had acquired. But now along the journey, Lot has acquired some stuff too. And Lot is now moving about with Abram with flocks, herds, and tents. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. The land couldn't sustain them both. You want to know, you know how you know if you're dealing with a lot? Here's number one. The first way that you know you're dealing with a lot is a lot will put a constraint on your capacity. We got to move. I only got five minutes. We, we, a lot will pull a constraint on your capacity. What was once enough is no longer enough. What was enough time is no longer enough time. I no longer have enough time for you and for me. Why? Because my territory has enlarged. And now that my territory has enlarged, I got more stuff I got to put my mind on. I got more stuff I got to put my time into. And I can't put that my, my mind and my time into what I want to put it into because I'm still dealing with a lot. Not only does a lot put a constraint on your capacity, but a lot will present conflicts of interest. Conflicts of interest. See, in the very next verse, see, the first thing that it tells us is that the land could no longer sustain them both. And whenever there's a constraint on your capacity, you will always deal with conflicts of interest because who do you serve when it's time to serve that thing? Do you serve yourself or do you wait and serve them and wait to serve yourself? And many of us deal with this problem as well. And the reason that we deal with this problem is because we don't want to be seen as selfish. We don't want to be seen as arrogant. We don't want to be seen as only thinking about ourselves. The most selfless thing you can do is take care of yourself because when you take care of yourself, it positions you to take care of others. I don't take care of me just for me. I take care of me for you. And the reason that I want to be successful is not just so I can be successful. The reason I want to be successful is I know whenever I get successful, everything with me is going up too. I don't want to win just for me. I want to win for you. But if I'm only focused on you, I can't take care of what God has put in my hand to take care of. Conflicts of interest. Conflicts of interest. And this is why many of us don't have peace now. It's because we're arguing with the residue of a previous season that we should have left in the past. And the problem is like Abram, we don't know that when we went through the season, there were some things that got attached to us that we should have let go of, but we couldn't let go of it because we didn't let go of. It's keeping us from moving forward. I need my, I need my residue. I need, I need some men to come and help me. See, the problem is we experience residue. And when we experience residue, do we mostly experience it in three areas of our lives the first place that you're going to experience residue is residue in your routines there's some things that you done got used to doing that God is telling you to stop doing and do differently and the other place that you experience residue is residue in your relationships you go through certain seasons and you think that the people that you went through those seasons with are along for the whole ride some people are seasonal and they should stay in the season where you met them and I was there when I met you but God is calling me to move forward and I see you don't have the capacity to go with me so I'm sorry but I gotta say bye and the other place that we experience residue is residue in our mind so so come right here you go on the other side okay you grab this arm 
you grab that arm. See, this is residue of my rituals. This is residue in my relationships. This is residue in my mind. And here's the problem. I was in this season, and in this season, God called me to sit. And while I sat, other people got attached to me. Other people were attracted to me. And while I was in my sitting season, I got stuff that got attached to me. I got used to just sitting. So my rituals just caused me to sit. My habits were okay when I was sitting. And when it's time for me to move, the residue of sitting don't want to let me go. And I, while I was in my sitting season, I developed relationships. I developed people who were around me who were okay with sitting because they were in their sitting season too. But when it's time for me to move forward, my relationships don't want to let me go. And the problem is, most of us deal with these things and we don't think that these things are holding us back because sometimes the, the, the residue will let you get up and it will let you go forward. But you can't go forward as fast as you want to go. So you're frustrated because stuff is not working out the way that you think they're supposed to work out. That you're not able to move as fast as you want to move. I know I'm doing the right things, but it don't seem like it's working out the way that it's supposed to work out for me. It's because I got residue that don't want to change its nature. And because it don't want to change its nature, it can't go with me in the flow of my favor. And because I want to move at the flow of favor, I got to look at some things that I got used to doing. And I got to say, you served me in a previous season, but in this next season of my life, I got to do things a little differently. So I got to let you go. And now I'm a little bit freer. I can move a little bit better. And now I got relationships though, who were used to those rituals. They were used to what I used to do. So I got to look at you and say, I love you to death. You were there for me when I wasn't there for myself. You held me up when I couldn't hold myself up. But now that I'm moving forward, I see that we are not in symbiotic relationship. So I gotta look at you and say I love you, but I gotta let you go. And now I still can move forward a little bit freer. But the problem is I still got residue in my mind. And the problem with residue in your mind is you attach the residue of your mind with your personality. You think this is just the way I am. But the truth is, it's not the way you are. It's residue from a past season. Yes, you got rid of the toxic relationship, but did you develop a mindset that says, I can't trust people? Did you develop a mindset that said, I can't get in relationship with everybody? Did you develop a mindset that said, I can't trust women? Did you get the mindset that said, I can't trust men? Yes, you let go of the ritual, but did you get rid of the mindset that said that it was just okay? Did you get rid of the mindset that said just a little bit is okay? Did you get rid of the mindset that says that I can't hang out with people who even do those things? Did you get rid of that mindset? Because if you didn't get rid of that mindset, God will tell you to go left, but your mind don't want you to go. So when you try to go, it's holding you hostage. Your mind is holding you hostage. The way that you think is holding you hostage. There's a conflict of interest between your mind and the mind of Christ. Be ye now transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be conformed to this world. In other words, don't be conformed to your own ways of thinking and don't be conformed to the ways of thinking that somebody else gave you. I'm, I'm held hostage. My mind is holding me hostage. I can't move like I really want to move. My mind is, is playing tricks on me. This is why the Bible says that the heart is deceitful. Who can know it? You think that your mind is protecting you, but your mind is actually holding you prisoner. Prisoner to a past season. Prisoner to a previous way of doing things. Previous to a prisoner to the previous way of relating to people and the problem is when you want to move forward your mind says no no you can't trust that so you got to stay back here when you want to move forward your mind says no no you can't get in relationship with them when you want to develop a new habit your mind says no I can't do it because I don't know if it'll work out for me I'm only used to doing the thing that I used to do but here's the problem with the residue of your mind you've attached it to who you are and when you attach residue from your mind with 
with who you are. You're never able to move forward in the way that God has called you to move. This is why Abram had to make up in his mind. If you go to the left, I'm going to the right. If you go to the right, I'm going to the left. But by any means necessary, I got to free myself from myself. I got to get rid of an old mind. I got to get rid of stinking thinking that's keeping me from moving where God wants me to move because I got somewhere to go. 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 I'm not in my sitting season anymore. I got to move on to my purpose. It was okay when I was in that land, but now God is calling me to travel. He's calling me to move. And now that he's calling me to move, I can't bring stuff along with me that don't want to move. I can't bring stuff along with me that just wants to attach itself to my success. I got to move freely. I got to be able to say, if God says go, baby, I'm going. If God says move, baby, I'm moving. When he say move, I move just like that. got to get rid of the residue so here's the issue that we have we have residue in our relationships we have residue in our rituals and we have residue in our mindsets and because you have this residue it's keeping you from not only your future and God's promise for your future but it's also keeping you from peace. If in order for you to have peace, I can't have none. I'm more concerned about whether or not you're comfortable than I am with whether or not I'm in my calling. Now, I'm gonna do something a little different. If you know that you got some residue, see, you praised God that the season happened, or you praised God that the season is over. But now that you've gotten out of the season, you're trying to walk into your next one, but you still got residue. You got residue in your mind, you got residue in your rituals, and you got residue in your relationships. I want you to follow my instructions really quickly. If you know that you have residue that's in your life, I want you to grab your cell phone, and I want you to meet me at this altar right now. Let's move quick. Move. Move. If you know you got residue, it's time to move. If you know you got residue, it's time to move. Make up in your mind that I'm moving on to my next. I'm moving on to God's best for my life. And I ain't got time to be worried about what used to be. I ain't got time to worry about what I used to take care of. I ain't got time to worry about who don't like it. It's time for me to move forward into my future. No more residue. No more residue. I got a lot on my mind and it's time to get it off. I got a lot on my mind and it's time to get it off. I got a lot on my mind and it's time to get it off. It's time to get it off my mind. It's been plaguing me for far too long and it's time for me to move forward. It's been holding me back for far too long and it's time for me to move forward. I'm not able to move as fast as I want to move because I got a lot on my mind. It's time for me to get free. All right. Now, I'm glad you made the move. Because right now you represent Abram. See, when the Lord told Abram to go, it said Abram went as the Lord told him. But this is why I told you to grab your phone. Because when Abram went, Lot went with him. And when you came, yours came with you too. Lot in your rituals, Lot in your relationships, Lot in your mindsets. I want you to think about the Lot that's on your mind right now. Because the first step in getting rid of Lot is to recognize that you have one. You need to recognize that you have one. The second step to getting rid of Lot, after you've recognized that you have a Lot, is to redress the Lot. In other words, you need to bring that thing into agreement with God's best for your life. You gotta fix the issue. And this is why I told you to grab your phone. Some of y'all need to go on your phone right now. Delete the contact. 
I'm not joking, I'm serious. Delete it now. Open it up, delete it now. Block, do not disturb. You will not call me no more. You can't plague my mind no more. I'm getting rid of lot. Get rid of it now. Block them now. Get rid of them now. Change their name to do not disturb. Open your phone, do it now. Open it, do it now. Do it now. Because you got a lot in your relationships and you need to get rid of it. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Don't, don't be like Abram. Don't be like Abram and wait until there's a conflict that comes up where you don't have a choice. Do it now. Save yourself some peace. You have a lot in your relationships. If you have a lot in your rituals, there are some alarms you need to set on your phone right now. Tomorrow morning, I'm getting up at 6 a.m. I'm hitting the gym. Ain't no, more, ain't no more time for me playing with my body and myself. I need to change my rituals. I got somewhere to go, so I got to take better care of myself. Put it in your phone now. Set the alarm now. Set the reminder now. Put it in your phone now. You got a lot on your mind. These rituals ain't serving you. It's time for you to start a new one. These habits ain't serving you. It's time for you to start a new one. You need to put, you need to put reminders in your phone. I know every day right around 12.30, I get an itching for McDonald's. I'm gonna put a reminder in my phone. I will not go. Set the reminder. Cause the first step, to dealing with Lot is recognizing that you have one. The second step to dealing with Lot is to bring redress. In other words, to fix the issue. Take the issue that's wrong and make it right. So you need to redress it. You have to make it right. Do it now. And then you don't just have relation, you don't just have relational things. You don't just have ritual things, but you also have mindset things. And this is why the third, the third set of instructions is important. Okay? This is where I want us to lean in. And I want everybody, if you have a prayer language, to pray in it. Because the hardest thing to let go of is not the ritual. The hardest thing to let go of is not the relationship. The hardest thing to let go of is the mindset that led you to it and that's keeping you in it. So the first thing you have to do is recognize you have a lot. The second thing you have to do is to redress the lot. But the third thing you have to do, and this is for your relationships, this is for your rituals, and this is for your mindset. You don't just have to recognize it. You don't just have to redress it, but you have to release it. You have to release it in your heart, and you have to say, I can't hold on to this any longer. It's keeping me from God's intended best for my life. So I gotta let this thing go in my heart. That's why I had you come to the altar, because this is the place to lay your burdens down. This is the place to let it go. You have to release it in your heart because God can get rid of what you're willing to release. So I want you to get that lock that's on your mind and I want you in your heart to start releasing it. Lord, I don't want it no more. Take this from me. You can have it. You can have it all. I don't want to hold on to this anymore. It's keeping me from what you have for me. Help me to let it go. Help me to release it. I can't carry it anymore. I give it over to you. I release this thing. It's all yours. You take it now. You take it now. You take it now. I release this thing. I release this thing. I release it in my heart. I release it in my mind. Release it. Release it. Release it. Release it. Y'all ain't releasing it. You gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. You gotta let them go. You gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. You gotta let them go. You gotta shift your mind. I've made up my mind that I'll adopt the mind of Christ. I'm not gonna think to my own understanding, but I'll lean on the word of the Lord. You have to let it go. You gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. You have to let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus, let it go. Come unto me, 
all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Let it go. You have to give it to me. 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 Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let them go. Let them go. When you leave this altar, you will not go back. When you leave this altar, you will not go back. There's some things you've been doing. When you leave this altar, you're not going back. There's some people you talk to. When you leave this altar, you will not speak to them again. But you got to let them go. Let it 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 go. In the name of Jesus, you got to let it go. No more is this thing going to play here, but you got to let it go. It starts in here, then you see it out there. I can't clean up what you won't crucify. Let it go now. It's got to die now. Put death to it in your heart. it it's had a hold on you for too long it's time to release it in here it's time for you to release it in here it's time for you to release it in here it's time to let it go it's time to let it go no more goodbyes you don't need closure it's time to let it go get rid of, you will not address what you refuse to acknowledge. And there's some things that need addressing. Now here's the beautiful part. God can and will get rid of residue, but he will not take from you what you carry and bring along the journey with you. Abram carried Lot for far too long. He did not tell him to carry Lot. Lot attached himself to him because he saw where God was about to take him. And I wish that I could tell you, I don't have time, but I wish I could show you through the scriptures. And it says, after Lot left him, after Lot parted from him, after Lot left him, God visits Abram again and says, I want you to look around the land. Everything that you see, I'm giving to you. I'll make your descendants as many as the dust. And the reason I'm going to give you this promise, and I didn't give it to you before, is because if I gave you the promise before, there were other people who were going to lay claim to the promise I had for you. But I want this for you and for you alone. But I'm not going to give it to you unless you're willing to let it go. So the reason you want to let it go is because if you don't let those people go, you can't get your promise. If you don't let the past go, you can't get your promise. There's an attachment of promise that's connected to what you're willing to release gotta let it go listen father in the name of Jesus for every stronghold that's in the mind of your people that they refuse to let go I break it now in the name of Jesus they will see it no more they will see that no more they will see that no more 
they will see them no more they will engage it no more they release it now in the name of Jesus by the power of your son Jesus and the blood that was shed on Calvary we release them from everything that refuses to let them go they're gonna let it go but for everything that refuses to let them go we break it now in the authority of the name of Jesus we break it now in the authority of the name of Jesus we break it now in the authority of the name of Jesus Jesus will break every yoke he will destroy every every yoke in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Whoa. be free in the name of Jesus 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 I need some Holy Ghost people praying in tongues right now be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Walk 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 free in the name of Jesus. You got to let this thing go. You got to let this thing go. Release it in the name of Jesus. 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 I surrender all. I surrender all, all to thee I owe, all to thee I owe, I surrender it all, be free in the name of Jesus, be free in the name of Jesus, be free, be free, there you go, somebody's releasing it now, you gotta let it go. next set of instructions is only for honest people. It's only for honest people. If you've already recognized that you have a lot that's on your mind, there's residue that's on your life right now, this next step is only for honest people. If you have residue that's on your life that you've never given over to Jesus and asked Jesus to wash clean from your life in the area of sin, See, there's some residue that's not sinful. It's just residue. But there are some things that are sin, and you've not allowed God to wash that and not allow God to cleanse that. In the way of you giving your life to Jesus, I want you to stay at this altar. And if you are, if you say, I've already got that, I've already allowed that, and I'm just here because of the residue of some not sinful things, but just bad things, I want you to go back to your seat. But for everybody else who says, I got a sin issue, sin residue, I want you to stay right here. In the name of Jesus. 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 Listen. We have next week, next week, we have something that we call Baptism Sunday. And this is the time for that residue to go down into a watery grave and you to be raised up into new life and you walk in a newness and in a freedom. Now, now, listen, listen. I don't care how many times you've been baptized before. If you recognize that there's something that you need to turn over and you say, God, for you I live and for you I will die. You're gonna show me how to do this thing called life and you wanna partake in that and give your life wholly, not partially, but wholly over to Jesus. I want you to meet Overseer Falkerson right over there and I want everybody to give God a great praise for everybody.
to live. I'm free to dance. I'm free to walk in the newness of life. I'm free to live in my purpose. I'm free. Woo! No longer bound, no more chains holding me. 